This video is on domain and range. We are going to do a few more examples of continuous data set, which means that our domain and range will be in set notation instead of a set of coordinates. So number five, we have a real world situation. It is in a word problem. An internet cloud unlimited storage plan costs $100 to join plus $1 per gigabyte of storage used. Determine the domain and range of the relation that models the cost depending on the amount of storage. So first we need to know which one is our independent and dependent variable so we know which one is our domain and range. So cost depends on storage. That means that the cost is the dependent variable. The cost would be our y value, which is our range. Therefore, our independent would be the amount of storage. So our domain is the storage that can be used. So if we think about this in, in real, real world, how much storage can we have? Can we have negative storage? That is impossible. We either have zero storage or positive. We can have zero storage. It just doesn't, we don't have any. Can we have one gigabyte, two gigabytes, we can have as much as we want. We can even have half of a gigabyte. It does not have to be in increments of one, two, three, four. It can be in decimal values. So when we say our domain is any value as long as it's larger than zero. So x is going to be greater than or equal to, because it could be zero, to zero because you can have as much storage as you want. I'm going to make a note about that. We can have as much storage as you want. We just cannot have negative storage. We can have zero storage or as much storage as we want to buy. So the range so again, we need to make sure we understand what it depends on. If I have no storage, I still have to pay money to join. Then once I've joined, I can add storage to it. That means that my first Y value, my first cost, will be $100. I cannot pay less than $100. If I just join, I will pay only $100 and nothing else. But then I can add another dollar and another dollar and another dollar but it's also per gigabyte so it would be maybe 50 cent if I added half of the gigabyte so my range which is a y value would be greater than or equal to 100 because that's the first y value that's the first cost so I'm gonna make a note about that we must pay the $100 no matter what. So that's our first cost. We need to think about what is your first cost and what will be your last cost. We could keep paying more and more and more money. We don't have to stop with adding more storage on there and then adding more money. So that's why it can go on forever, which is why I don't have a start and a stop. I only have a start value. On question six, this is a graph. This is a continuous data set because it does contain all the values here. This one is a little more complicated because there are multiple locations of data points. So when we're looking at our domain, which is our x values, we don't have a, um, a real world application here to know what the domain represents. So on this one, domain is just your x values. If we remember from how to understand what the domain is, it's the x values. And on a graph, it's your farthest number to the left until the farthest number to the right. So I'm going to actually use a highlighter to find my that value of my farthest one to the left. This is the farthest data point I have to the left. And then on the right hand side, this is my farthest data point I have on the right hand side. Well, I'm going to do the same thing with range, and then I will actually write out what my domain and range is. So I'm going to use another highlighter. I want to find for my range, I want to find my lowest point on the graph. 
which there's nothing here, nothing here. My lowest point on the graph is here. Now I want to go to my highest point on the graph. So this is all touching, this is touching. I have nothing above two, so this is my highest point on the graph. Now what I've actually just created is a rectangle that shows me the left and right and then the top to bottom. So I'm going to write out my domain and range. My domain is coming from the x's, so this pink line. This is at a negative 5. And my domain is all the x's. And then my farthest one on the right, so this pink line, will go on to the positive 5. Now for the inequality. At the negative 5, there is an open circle. What that means is that negative 5 is not touched. So when I write my inequality, I'm going to have my greater than, but I will not have that equal to sign on there because it is not touching that negative 5. When I go to the other pink line, the positive 5, it is a solid circle there. That means that I can include that positive 5, so it will be less than or equal to positive 5. When we do the range, we're going to look at the same thing, but we're going to look at the blue. So the blue, I want to look for the lowest one. Now it is at this coordinate of negative 5, negative 2, and that's an open circle. But I also have a solid part at 2, negative 2, 3, negative 2, and 5, negative 2. It's solid. So negative 2 is in fact touched. Even though it's open here, they are closed on these three locations, so I can keep it closed. So my range, my lowest y value, is at negative 2 put my y in the middle, and my highest y value is at positive 2. So for the inequality at negative 2, as I said, this is closed on three of them. Even if it was just closed on one of them, I can use it. That means that I can include the greater than or equal to sign with the y. So y is greater than or equal to negative 2. And at the positive 2, it is solid on this line up here. So that means I can say that y is less than or equal to positive 2. So again, I'm going to make a little note over here just to remind us that we have an open circle on the negative 5, which is why we do not have the equals to part on our inequality. On example 7, again we have a graph. Our domain and range are just x's and y's. So if we're looking at our domain, we want to find your smallest x value. So if I were to do this again with my pink highlighter, my smallest x value, I don't have anything on these negatives, my smallest x value is that 0. Then where is the largest x value? These arrows mean that they actually keep going forever, so I don't have a largest x value. That means my x values will keep going. So I, because I had two lines here, I knew that I had two values to start and stop on. But with this problem, I do not have a start and stop. I only have a starting value. So I know that my x values are going to start at 0, and they will keep going on forever in the positive, so it'll get bigger. Now it does hit 0, so I can put that greater than or equal to. So then when we're talking about our range, I would look for the lowest y value, which this y value, is since it's pointing down, it's going to keep coming down, so I don't actually have a lowest y value, and I also don't have a highest y value because it keeps going up forever. So this graph keeps going down and up forever. It does not start or stop anywhere. So we will say that our range is all real numbers. And another way of putting this, so we can put it in the correct notation, would be y is an element of, it's like a little fancy e, all real numbers. And that all real numbers, again, is that the fancy r, you do two vertical lines, you start in the back, and you make your r go to the front. Now for number eight, again, domain and range, we have just x's and y's. So our domain is your furthest one to the left and your furthest one to the right. This arrow is telling me that this keeps going to the left, so I don't have a starting point on the left, and this graph keeps going to the right, so I don't have an ending point on the right. So just like the last one with our range, our domain in this case is every single x value there is. 
So I can say this is all real numbers. And again, we can put it in the correct notation of x is an element of all real numbers. So this is an element of because it's not equal to it because it, it just is an element. All of the x values are part of real numbers. For our range, we want to find your smallest y value. Well, right now, our y value is at positive 3. This graph is just pointing to the right. It's not pointing up, and it's not pointing down. Since it's just pointing to the right, this will be at 3, 1, uh, 1 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6, 3. All the y values will be 3. Same thing on this part. This graph is just pointing to the left. It is not going up or down, so it is staying constant. Our y value is still staying constant. This is a horizontal line, actually, so the equation of this would actually be y equals to positive 3. There is no bigger than 3 or less than 3. This line, this graph, will continuously only stay at 3. And this is our domain and range for continuous data set.